Opening a bar from scratch is, I would say, one of the hardest things you could do right now. It's almost like insane to try to do a brand new concept, a brand new situation. We've received a lot of support. Our city in general supports local, and so we have a lot of foodies and just people who love their local neighborhood bars. We know the communities behind us. This video is made possible by our supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much. The success of any bar is about internal chemistry. Similar passions. Everyone from all of our owners down to our door hosts is very passionate about what we're doing here. It's a place you want to come to work. It's a place that you want to see succeed. It's taken the whole team. Uh, I'm Adam Curry. I'm the head chef at Gold Bar. I've cooked in Louisville for about 10 years. I'm Aaron Plevin. Uh, I'm the beverage director and bar manager. I've been in the industry and in the, on the beverage side of things for probably the last nine, 10 years. Well guys, thank you so much for, for having me. This is it's great. It's my first time like coming to a, a bar, so I'm looking forward to, to drinking. Uh, and you've, you've made something for me, you've made a, your house specialty, your top seller. What is it? What am I drinking here? So you're drinking our signature house gold rush. Uh, it's called After the Gold Rush. It is a riff on a traditional gold rush, which is basically a whiskey sour uh, with bourbon, honey syrup, and lemon, uh, minus the egg white. Uh, we've made uh, our gold rush unique um, by doing an in-house uh, fermented lemonade. Uh, known as uh, Sema, which is a Scandinavian in origin, uh, and it uh, is also infused with golden raisins uh, by tradition. So we do that in-house, and that is kind of the secret ingredient to our house gold rush. It's served up in a real swanky looking uh, coop with a, with a cube. People seem to dig it. Uh, you know, we're a bourbon town, so our bourbon cocktail is the number one top sellers. All right, well, this is, this is a great way to start every interview. Social distance, cheers. <laughs> Mm. No one really wants to start a restaurant during yeah. a pandemic. Whoa, what, uh, what were you guys thinking? Things started getting weird at the end of February and it really pushed back a few months. You know, everybody got a little bit more time to think about how they really wanted to convey mm -hmm. Gold Bar. And I know I got to spend weeks sitting around like reading books and looking at recipes like, how can I make this more me? Right. So, so what are you trying to do as, as a chef, trying to, how do you convey Gold Bar? Basically, we're just going to try to hit all of the wonderful pub food that everyone's used to. So like, we're not going to try to reinvent the wheel there, but we're also going to parallel that with the vegan options that come along. So if you can get a chopped cheese at Gold Bar, you can get a vegan chopped cheese at Gold Bar, you know? like. Everything's gonna be well. We're just gonna make people kind of rethink bar food in the terms of it doesn't have to be what it's always been. It can be new and something different that you've never had before, but it's presented in a way that you've had it a million times. You know, when you work with local farmers and like local people, you get that small batch as opposed to just buying what everyone else is buying. And you're getting stuff from local farmers? Yeah. What, what I, kind of stuff? I, my beef is a 21 day aged beef. So when you order the hamburger, it's not just a normal smash burger. It's a dry aged like smash burger that's got a little bit more flavor. You don't have to do so much to the meat, you know, to make it flavorful. It's already got a lot of flavor to it. So you pair that with our gold sauce. Boy, it's just a good time. And as the beverage director, what are you, how are you trying to convey Gold Bar? I really like everything that Adam said. We're a neighborhood bar. Uh, we are not trying to be a super high-end craft cocktail bar. We're not trying to be a dive bar uh, that intentionally, you know, uh, keeps things, uh, you know, super easy and simple and kind of gritty. I want people to be able to drink a high-end cocktail if they would like. Um, the way uh, we've done our citrus program and the way we make our in-house syrups and things like that has allowed us to reduce the cost of things so that no one's paying more than $10 for a cocktail. You know, that's important to me because, uh, you know, I want people to come in here and see a $9 cocktail where in other places it would be a $12, $14, $15 $15 cocktail so that people can come in here and enjoy that if they would like. But if they want to drink vodka Red Bull, if they want to drink Bud Light, they can, but we also have uh, a row of local craft beers. We have a lot of specials. At the end of the day, we're following uh, two really successful bars that in my frequenting of them were my favorite bars as well. Both had a charm to them. We're gonna keep the vibe going. 
Adam, where do your cooking influences come from? I've always enjoyed grilling meats and smoking meat, doing things that are a little bit more complicated. Getting out there and really trying different things has always been like kind of the adventure side. Seeing what else is out there, what haven't I eaten before that tastes good? And then the chicken wings we do here, we smoke them and fry them. So oh, wow. Fun. Tell me about your tell me about your old fashioned because it's not a normal one. We just uh, kind of uh, switch a few things up. So instead of a by default bourbon old fashioned, uh, we do a rye old fashioned, and that is more of just like a traditional throwback. Uh, original old fashions uh, in their you know early beginnings were not made with bourbon. It was before bourbon was ever even popularized, and so they were being made with gin and rum and brandy and rye whiskey and corn whiskey and things like that, and they were actually taken in the morning uh, as like a medicinal sort of espresso shot. It, it has a you know little little nod to history there, uh, and so I fell in love with Old Forester Rye, uh, 100 proof, uh, ever since it came out, and I just kind of knew, it's like, well, if I have an Old Fashioned on the menu, it's gonna be with rye, not bourbon. People love the switch up, turns out they're delicious. Uh, the other unique thing uh, to our Old Fashioned is we do an in-house bitters blend, uh, which means we're taking a few different kinds of bitters, particularly Angostura, and then an orange bitter, we're blending those along with an Amaro that is kind of on the dark chocolate side of things. And then we're adding a vanilla bean uh, in the Dasher bottle itself. And it just kind of gives it a unique uh, spice quality that wouldn't otherwise be in normal bitters and a nice mellow vanilla subtleness that will complement the, the barrel aged in the rye. Yeah, so, I want, I'd want. i like one of those as well. Done. With drinks covered, it's time to order some food. Like we have a smoked eye of round, which is what our chopped cheese is from. That beef has been smoked for like six hours. I, I kind of want that. <laughs> have you started cooking my food yet? Oh no, like, we can do I one today. To... Okay, it's... I might have oh, to get yeah. the tub cheese. So then we chill it, and then we slice it real thin, and then we put it on the flat top with peppers and onions, just like you would at a, at a carnival or like a fair, you know, and then just cover that in cheese. And just wrap that up in a bun and smash that on down. Oh, it good. is. So good. Whoa. Oh, it's chucked full. Mmm. <laughs> so it's like a cheesesteak on, on roids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The smokiness, mm. the griddleness. Yeah. Is that a pretzel bun I'm eating? Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mmm. Cheesy, meaty. Mm. I think it's better than a Philly cheesesteak, if you ask me. Mm. Is there bacon in there? Or is that just the smokiness? That's just the smokiness. There's no bacon. Mm. That's thinly sliced beef. Mm. We smoke it for a long time and then I wrap it back up with butter and it's just more tender after that. You wrap it up with butter. I, for I forgot my cholesterol medication at home. Mmm. <laughs> Maybe not the best first date food. No, that's definitely. Or maybe, or, no, may, or maybe first, it just depends. And the pretzel bun, where's that from? That's uh, from a local baker, his name's Klaus. I've used his buns for a long time. Great guy, great product. I'm loving this. You can come here and get whatever you like. You can come and get fries and a burger and a Bud Light, or you can get a high-end cocktail or a pitcher of sangria, you know, and just hang out. The goal for Gold Bar was make a very accessible neighborhood bar for people place where people can come and feel comfortable, make memories, do what they want, eat what they want, drink what they want. It's been a great ride. This has been wonderful, awesome. love the cocktails, loving the food, and this is my neighborhood, and I can see this being my neighborhood bar, so awesome. thank you. My supporters on Patreon get access to exclusive content like deleted scenes, extended interviews, more vlogs, photos I don't post anywhere else, and early access to my videos. You can even ask me questions in a monthly Q&A while drinking a cocktail I taught you how to make. All of these benefits and more for the price of a coffee from your local coffee shop. What a deal. That's patreon.com forward slash mabig. Thank you so much for your support.